is a little bit not our, our normal uh, operation and so forth, but uh, uh, we'll get, we'll, we'll uh, let's open in a word of prayer and we'll go ahead and get started here and uh, just kind of work through this, okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the morning, Lord. We, as we look this morning at your word and as we consider the things here for uh, our assembly and, and the orderly maintenance of it and the, and, and the look into the new year, uh, and, and the theme of the new year, that we would do so for your honor and for your glory. In your name we pray, amen. Um, if you'll take your Bibles with me and turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Um, again, what we do what this year, we do this every year. Uh, I do it. Um, I, <laughs> the, the state of Arizona requires this of any nonprofit uh, having a, a, a general meeting. I do it anyway and have always done this uh, for the issue of transparency. I do nothing underneath the table. I do nothing behind the closed doors. I do everything out above board and in the open. And if you have questions as we go through things, you, you're, uh, this is the only time in this hour you can interrupt me, okay? Uh, usually on the 11 o'clock hour we're, we motor. Um, but as we do this and so forth, I, I do this, we have to, again, be remembered and reminded of what we are doing. Uh, hey, fixed it for me, that a boy. All right, that's, what, that's a good kid to have in the closet, or in the media room, okay? Well, that's Ricky's closet, that's what, and that's Dad's closet, and that's Ricky's closet, So, because they literally are closets. Um, so when you think about what we do here as a local assembly, okay, in, in Acts 14, the Apostle Paul uh, began, began, is out in his apostolic journeys. Paul was not a missionary, okay? Paul was an apostle. And as he goes out in his apostolic journeys, he would go into a town, and he had a mode of, of, operin, of operation. And, and, and we see it in Acts 14, in, in Acts 14, verse 20, Howbeit as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up, came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Now watch, watch how Paul works. Everywhere Paul went, he, 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 he was after something, he was doing something. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, so the first thing he does when he comes into the city Derby, Lystra, Iconium, Antioch, all these cities, as he preaches the gospel. He comes in, there's no believers in the city, there's no one there believe, that believe, and he comes in and he says, Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day, and faith and faith in that alone, period, boom, they believe. He preaches the gospel. He does the work of an evangelist, if you will. All right? Verse 22 confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that much uh, we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Notice the confirming the souls. The very next thing he does is he, he goes through the edification process of the, the, uh, of, of the doctrine given to him. So he'll go in, he gives the gospel. He lays that foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? He, do, he, gives, he gives the gospel. Uh, he, give, he talks about the cross. Then he, be, then he confirms the souls. He comes in, and he begins the edification process. Starts with the book of Romans, and then it goes all the way up through Ephesians into Thessalonians. Those are those books of doctrine, okay? He, he's, he's, he's building and he's establishing. In Romans, he talks about the grace of God. In Ephesians, he talks about the goal of God, why he's doing the church, the body of Christ today. What's the goal? Thessalonians, he talks about the glory that's out there. So we have our, our faith, our hope, and our love demonstrated. And he begins to work. We, we begin to, 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 he begins to lay in the things that are happening. Now, in Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, okay, he's going to talk about godliness, and then he talks about our fellowship. 
when we come together in a local assembly. So he's confirming. He's, he's building in the edification process. Then verse 23. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. Then he established a local assembly. Because the local assembly, the local assembly here is the vehicle in which does the work of the ministry. And we talked about that last time. So in doing that, there. by the way, each of these local assemblies, Iconium, Lystra, Derby, Antioch, are independent of each other. We don't have a mother church. We don't belong to a denomination. We don't send money back up the pipeline. By the way, that's why you have a denomination and a mother church, is to get money from your down legs. You understand multi-level marketing? We put it out there, and suck it all back in. We don't have it. We're independent. These guys are self-governing, the elders. By the way, this stuff happened quickly with Paul. It doesn't take years and years and years, okay? So you have this edification process. You have the establishment of the local assembly. Now come over to 2 Corinthians 4. In doing that and understanding the issue of the local assembly, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. That's our ministry verse here. Our ministry, our ministry goal, the fundamental issues that we're doing is commending the truth to every man's conscience. How are we going to do it? Well, we're not going to do it dishonestly. We're not going to do it with craftiness. We're not going to do it by handling the word of God deceitfully. Now, handling the word of God deceitfully is the issue of rightly dividing the word of truth. It's the issue of coming to the scriptures the way God would have us come to the scriptures dispensationally, 2 Timothy 2.15. Okay? We're not going to take the word and say it says this when it says that. We let it say that, and we adjust to that. All right? If the truth is what people are looking for, then guess where they're going to find it, we hope, right here. Most of you, if, if, I've, if you're new to us, I have probably have asked you, how did you find out about us? How did you hear about us? A lot of it's on the Internet now, and, 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 but a lot of it is also through each other and the internal issues that are there. Now, come over with me to 1 Timothy chapter 3. So that's our ministry verse. So if anybody says, what's your ministry verse? Well, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 2 is what it is. What are we going to do? We're not going to do this. We're going to do it this way. And again, I tell Ricky, I tell the guys on our board and so forth. We'll introduce them here in just a minute. I tell them all the time, listen, what do I tell them? I told Ricky, this is what made me think about it, we're going to do anything that's free. So if it's on the Internet and it's free, we're doing it within reason. You know, I asked him one time, I go, hey, should we be on Snapchat? He goes, no. Okay. Should we be over here on this and that? No, no. Why? Because it's not conducive to ministry. You can't do what we do in 30-second blurbs or 10-second blurbs. You just can't. you got to have. So we don't do that. But, hey, as long as it's free, now things have, have become where you got to pay for them. We build that into the media budget, and we pay for it. Why? Because we're wanting to be out in the community out in especially this, the local community. In 1 Timothy 3, the Apostle Paul, in the, actually the whole book of 1 Timothy, Paul is laying out how a local assembly is to be organized and it is to run. Here's the role of the men in the local assembly, and here's the role of the women in the local assembly. And then subsequently, the, the younger, the children that are there. Here are the roles. Here are how this is going to play. Here's how this is going to be done decently and in order. Okay? Not chaotically, not all over the place, but this is how we're going to do it. So he lays out the, the issue there, verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office, office of a bishop, he desire a good work. Again, notice, desire. It's not a gift anymore. It's a desire. Things change. The gifts are done. We got the completed word of God. Now we're desire. So that desire there, verse 8, 
Likewise, must the deacons be grave. So likewise, what? If you, you need to desire to, to be, to want to be a deacon, okay? In other words, it's not mandated. It's not mandatory. It's, uh, hey, I want to do this because I want to be involved in the work of the local assembly here, okay? Verse 15. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. I love that. We're the church of the living God. Not a dead God, but a living God. A God that's alive, who would have all men get saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That's a wonderful, that's a wonderful God to be involved with. Okay? It really is. It's tremendously wonderful. But then he says, the pillar and ground of the truth. The pillar. We're going to hold up the baby, hold up the truth. <laughs> Very rarely do we hear them out of that back room, but that's okay. What are we going to do? We're going to, the pillar and the ground of the truth. We're going to hold up the truth. Here's where the truth is. Okay? We're commending the truth to every man's conscience. The ground. The ground is, is what holds the pillar up. So what do we do with the ground? We maintain it. We protect it. We're proclaiming the truth, and what are we doing? We're protecting the ground. We got the defenses set. The landscaper's been in, cleared it all out. There's nothing there, and we're, we're maintaining it. I tell Brian Steiner, he's our landscaper, I said, I want A1 property. Look, I want the pro when people drive by, I want them to go, okay, there's people who care about their property. The building is just a building. When you guys leave, the church left for the day. The church is you, not this building. This is a tool. This is a place where we can come together, get out of the elements, enjoy fellowship, have part, do whatever. Okay, that's all the building is. Somebody asked me, what, how big is your campus? I'm like, it's huge, baby. It's worldwide, man. He's like, no, come on. What is, I said, well, it depends on what you mean by campus. You know, when we were meeting on baseline, I, we had a huge campus. I mean, the, the complex was big, <laughs> but we only had a little bitty room in it, but it was big. And so, you know, why? Because what, what does religion say? The bigger, the better. I will always remind you, God is not in the big. He never was in the big. He's always in the small, in the detail, in the minor. And that's where we want to be. We're going to hold up. It's the pillar and the ground of the truth. That's what we're doing. We're holding up the Word of God, rightly divided, the truth. Here it is. As ambassadors for Christ, we're going to be talking about some of this coming up. Our job is to go out and to preach grace and peace to an unworthy, lost, no good, dirty, rotten world. And what are we to preach? God's not angry with you. That's the peace. He died for you. There's His grace. And that's what we're holding up. Want to hear it? Here it is right here. Okay? And you come over to, well, you're in Timothy, so come back to 1 Thessalonians 1. <clears throat> in verse 8, 1 Thessalonians 1, 8. For from you, this will be the church at Thessalonica, sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak of anything. The local church is the vehicle that's sounding out the truth. What are we going to do? We're going to see some folks get saved. We're, they're going to come to the knowledge of the truth. They're going to get edified. So we're going to get them. They're going to get saved. They're going to get edified. Get established in the local church. And then there's an expansion. Follow? That's what we're doing. Okay? That's the movement here. The local church is the vehicle to sound out, to get the truth out in a local community. Our responsibility isn't in Chicago, California, wherever you're from. That's not my responsibility. It's not yours. Ours just sits right here. Our goal, again, is to reach our community. And we're going to do it through the local church. If, if you look there at Philippians 1, I, you know, 
here in 1 Thessalonians. Look at Philippians 1. I'm sorry. I know I said it. Philippians 1, verse 1. And the reason I'm stressing this is because this, this morning, is the state of this assembly. When I say state of the assembly, I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm talking about us. Okay? A health check. Here's our next Tuesday. I go to the doctor for my yearly exam. I'm like, yearly? He's like, yep. I'm like, okay. You know, yearly. So here we are. Philippians 1, verse 1, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Again, notice it's the saints. And who came out of the saints? The bishops and the deacons. And that's how it's designed to work. So if you look at the agenda, you'll see the issue of the board members. So come over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We know that we're to have bishops and deacons. At the current moment, I am the only bishop. By the way, you will hear a lot of people have different ideas about elder and bishop and deacon, okay? And that's fine. None of that's right or wrong, okay? Just this is how we do it. It's, it's pliable. It's flexible to how it can be fit in anything, Okay? When we got started, we, this, our, this church was established in 1998. And when we got started, there was no board. You know why? Because it was me and mine and another family and another family, and that was it. And none of us understood what it was to be in leadership. We just looked at each other and said, we got to do this, so let's go do it. Right? We were meeting in the hotel at La Quinta, the La, La Quinta I get it right. Down there off of the 60 in Superstition Springs, I'd walk in. I would pay the bill for the, for the month. Why? Because we didn't, offering box, forget about it. We didn't know nothing. We were just doing what we were trying to get started. All right? As we grew and as we got bigger, then it became evident that, you know, I can't make all the decisions anymore. One, it's not proper. Two, we got too much. So now it's developed and we developed and we uh, established uh, board uh, I, we call it the board, uh, 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 leadership board, okay? 1 Thessalonians 5, the reason I say this is verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in, in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. By the way, the local assembly is to be a place of peace, a sanctuary. You're out there in the nasty, come in here, and it should be peaceful. Doesn't always happen, but it's supposed to be. But you're to know. So we have a board. Uh, so the guys on the board, if you'll stand up, please. Okay? So we got Ricky, Bruce, Brian, Mark, and Greg. You see, they're always around. These are our, these are our current board members. And by the way, I'm... I'm on the board, okay? So you need to know these guys because if you got problems, you can go talk to them. Don't come to me, okay? <laughs> All right, you guys can sit, please. Thank you. All right? So that's the guys on the board. That's, your, that's our leadership, those five guys plus me. Now, the number on the board can be whatever. If you're interested in being on our board, you need to talk with me, and I'll go over uh, what we, how we do that, Okay? We have two young men right now that are in, in candidacy for it, and they're not ready quite yet to be brought on. We're trying to get some of the younger guys involved, okay? They're in training, if you will, All right, if, okay? But the, the biggest thing for us to be on the board is you have to be with us year-round, so no winter visitor. Uh, we've had issues with that in the past, a horrible time in our past. And then you have to be with us at least a year, so that we can do verse 12 and 13, get to know you, know who you are, make sure we're on the same page doctrinally, and so forth. So we just don't bring anybody in off the street to be in the board, to be in the meeting, to have a say. We just uh, go and do that, okay? So the board members are there, all right? Now, come over with me, if you will, to Ephesians chapter Number, well, where did it go? Where's the one let him labor, work with his hands? I just had it. So 
what you get for not writing it down. The next agenda item is the issue of the finances. Ephesians chapter number 4, if you will. Okay? When we talk about finances and the financial giving, there, there's an issue here that needs to be, we, we're going to look at. That's the second page, by the way, on your, on your uh, list. R- Ricky, if you would advance that to the next slide. Thank you, buddy. If you look at Ephesians 4, if you look at verse 28, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good. Why does he need to do that? That he may have to give to him that needeth. Now, that's a wonderful verse about work and the proper attitude about work. Well, I'm going to have a job because I have mouths to feed and a family to support, so I do that. But I also have an opportunity now to come over here and help others that need help. That is the local assembly, okay? That is also being able to help each other. But you're going to, in in the context of Ephesians, which is the church at Ephesus, it's in that local assembly. So the finances um, last year, and and again, this is on your, uh, the handout that I, that we provided for you, if you got it. If you didn't, we can uh, get you one. So at the end of 22, the bank account numbers were listed there, okay? Uh, the checking account and the savings account, uh, that's, they're not on the overhead. And we had a total of $131,452.34. But before you pop a gun and go, oh, my goodness, look at all the money. They don't need any more money. There's a reason why that number is the way it is. We've been at this for over 20 years, and we've been saving and scrimping and so forth. The next, if you look at the 22, total giving for 22 was 115000 Total expenses, 107. So we had about $8,000 to the good. That is a normal year for us. Okay? So giving and expenses usually are coming to a zero the best we can. <laughs> All right? If, okay? So don't think, when you see that 131, don't go, oh my goodness, they're loaded. No. Because look, if you will, at the breakout of those monies. Okay? In the general checking, in the checking account, the general fund, that's very fluid. As of this morning, these are the numbers, okay? That's this morning, all right? But you see the savings, the building fund. You see how that says designated? We're going to be talking here in a minute about expansion next door, that enclosure of the carport. We did not do that until we had the money saved, Dave Ramsey principle, okay? So we have the 60K in the bank. That's part of the 131, okay? Saved for that project. We did not do the project. We, did, we didn't look about it we didn't, until we were on that saving track. Follow? So half of that money, we've, we've saved money. Then you see the, sa- the emergency fund designated, the 25 5 that is three months of normal activity, normal expenses there, the 84.95 right above it there. That's three months. So if the bottom falls out of the economy, what do we have in reserve? We have three months that, well, we can start making decisions, not rationally, not going, oh, my goodness, not quickly. We have three months as a group to come together and say, okay, look, this is what we need to do. You guys follow that? Again, stewards of the money, trying to hear transparency, okay? So when you go back up in the estimated expenses for the month, you have them there, okay? <clears throat> the general, the checking account is very fluid. It's going to move, you know, it's going to fluctuate. But the 60 is there until we start the project, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. And then the, sa- the emergency fund never gets depleted until we are in an emergency, okay? The emergency fund is not replacing the air conditioning unit on the, the roof. That comes out of the general fund. The emergency fund is, is there's no more general fund, and we've got to figure out what we're going to do moving forward ministry-wise, okay? You guys follow that? 
Any questions? Please. The money is the big thing because I ask you about the offering box, you know, a couple times a week and whatnot. And I don't want you to understand. I want you to understand what we're, what, where, where, where your money's going, if you will. Okay. So you're in Ephesians, right? Come over to chapter four. Let's real quickly run through the estimated expenses. Obviously, the big expense is me, yours truly, okay? Um, for many years, I worked a 40 to 60 hour job week and then would just work here and get a little little stipend to help with so forth. But then several years ago, the guys were like, you're done doing that. We want you to be full time. We got, we got the building paid off. So our campus is debt free. As long as we save the money up to do the projects, the campus stays debt free. By the way, we're not going to go get any debt so that we can just do something to do something, okay? We're going to have it. We're going to be prudent about it and so forth. And uh, that's where the new the guys coming on the board, they get a real quick lesson from Rick. We don't do nothing until the money's in the bank because I don't want debt to hold, be held over our head in case of an emergency, okay? So the guys came. They said, we'd like to get you full time. What would it take? Linda and I did crunch the numbers. Then COVID hit, so we crunched the numbers some more, and uh, we've got it figured out and everything. And so that's what you see. That is my housing and compensation, the package together. So I'm the biggest, uh, the biggest loser. I'm the biggest, the biggest uh, on on that. Okay. So if something were to happen and we're dipping into the emergency fund, guess what's first to go? Me. Why? I'm the biggest bill. Not me personally leaving, but just in that compensation, okay? And that's where we, that's where I don't want us to have to make a decision in two days. I'd like us to have three months to figure out what's happening, okay? Uh, obviously, you see the utilities, APS uh, is our electricity. This is for both buildings, so it's all one. Uh, the water, the, sewer, the city of Tempe, uh, the brotherhood, the property insurance, um, the supplies. Then we do, we do budget for a uh, property repairs. There's where the savings get in for future projects and so forth that come up or, or the air conditioner on the roof breaks. Then we have, okay, we've got that kind of set aside. By the way, each air conditioner on the roof on this building are eight grand a piece. Just last time we did it, okay? A couple years ago. Then you see landscaping. The landscaper is Brian Steiner. They, they donate a lot of their work and so forth. That is if something were to happen to the Steiners, they couldn't do. Then when we have to go out and get ABC landscaping to come in, in the budget is already budgeted to take care of that. So it wouldn't be a shock to the system, okay? All right, any questions on that? I skipped one, I know, the media, okay? The media is our one of the other big ones because of the internet getting out on, on uh, Dropbox, WordPress, SoundCloud, getting the message out into, uh, into the uh, marketplace of ideas, okay? And as those things fluctuate, they change. I will tell you they're only going up, <laughs> okay? So that's just the, the nature of the beast, all right? Any questions about the expenses? By the way, last year we, had, we were eight grand to the plus, roughly, so we did pretty good on our budget. We did pretty good on, on, on all the details, okay? All right, you got Ephesians 4. Can we, are we good with the money? So when you guys put money, whether it's there or PayPal or Zelle, by the way, we prefer the Zelle because then PayPal doesn't get their cut. But the Zelle and all that, when we do that, it, I want you to know where it's going. That's where it's going, okay? And it's going not to just, it's not going to buy me a new car, all right? You know, it's just not doing that. We're, we've got ministry. I emailed uh, uh, the dad in the ministry back there for more tracks and stuff in the back that we're getting low on. That costs money, okay? So we have that, okay? All right, and Ephesians chapter 4, if you will. Ephesians chapter 4, if you look at verse 16, because when we talk, again, when we talk about money, that is usually where everybody gets kind of itchy because you're talking about money. And it's not that we're all always about that, but unfortunately that is how things get, the, the value system in our culture works. Verse 16, for, from whom, 
See that from whom the whole body, fitly joined together, compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. That's how all this gets done. It's internal. It's you talking to friends and family about the doctrine, and then they come. That's how you build a church, by the way, is internal out, not out in. Okay? You build it from inside. I know what the marketing guys, I know the mega guys do, you know, I've, and they go out outside, bring them in. No, we go in. Why? Because that's, that's where the, uh, that, that, that's where this stuff is designed to work in the inside of you. Okay? Again, you can go to 2 Corinthians 9, the cheerful giver. You know where a cheerful giver comes from? The sound doctrine working effectually in you. That's where it comes from. It doesn't come from me beating you over the head. Uh, get it, get it. You know, no, that just bows your back. It comes from the doctrine working effectually in you that believe. Okay? And, and again, you can go, uh, look over with me at 2 Corinthians 8. My goal is not to take us past noon. If you were here last week, you understand that. My goal is to, just so that you're aware of what we're doing, okay? Transparency of the mega, mega sort, mega sort, okay? Look at 2 Corinthians 8. Uh, by the way, paying the preacher, Galatians 6 is the, 6, 6 is the verse on that. 1 Timothy 5, 17, we're double honor and so forth. And we, we understand all that. We're going to talk more about giving later in the, this year and what we're going to be doing in our theme. But I want you to notice something here in 8.1. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Now, Paul's been talking to the Corinthians about raising money for the poor saints at Jerusalem. And he's given the outline. He's given the, this is how it's to be done and so forth. And he does that in 1 Corinthians. The church at Corinth is a very wealthy church. They didn't have a want Okay, and when we look at where Paul did ministry, he doesn't just go out to, he didn't go out here to Podunk nowhere. He went into strategic locations and established churches and to do. But Corinth isn't doing their part. They're letting the Macedonians, the, the church at Philippi, do it. So Paul's kind of scolding them here, rebuking them. And he says, how, verse 2, he's, verse 1, Hey, brethren, we do you to wit the grace of God bestowed on the churches of... Hey, guys, at Corinth, look at what's going on at Macedonia. Now watch these guys. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded under the riches of their liberality. Now, that, ish, that word liberality is about giving. It's about money. It's about the ability to do. Corinth was liber could have been liberal with the giving. The Macedonians, not so much. What, are, what do they have? They have deep poverty. They're in great trial of affliction. Now watch verse 3. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord, and unto us by the will of God. Look at their attitude. That's what I want you to see. Their attitude was, we're going to be a cheerful giver because we're not giving it out of necessity. We're giving it out of because that's what needs to be done so Paul can get going and do the work of the ministry. What I want you to see, though, verse 4, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift. Do you know what Paul and the guys had told the churches at Macedonia to do with that money? Keep it. You need it. You're in great trial. You're in, a, you're, you're in deep poverty. you got bills to pay. And you know what they said? No, Paul, bills are paid. This is for you to go and to do, to take to the poor saints, to do ministry. The added, what, but what did they first do? They gave themselves to who? To the Lord. God loves a cheerful giver. One that's done what? Purposed in himself? And, and you follow that? 
So when we talk about giving, that's the attitude to have that we're going to be in. By the way, the offering box is in the back, and you can fill it up. I said that one time years ago, and the little girl, she's not little anymore, she sat back there and stuffed it full of tracks. I'm like, well, you got the right idea, just the wrong, wrong piece of paper, you know. And, and she just said, don't fill it up. But uh, anyway, okay, so money is, I know money gets tricky. I know it's expensive to do business today. I know I'm, I'm up here usually Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, sometimes Fridays. Monday mornings are my kind of my sleep in, get over sat Sunday. And then we have Monday night Bible study, okay, and so forth. And I'm, so I understand what it is to go fill up the truck a couple times, all right? I get that. But it's beyond that. It's the work of the ministry. And that's what's counting here, okay? So next item if Ricky will put it back or on your hand out there, uh, the ministry, okay? And really just kind of just to bring you up to date on some things that are going on, uh, there was a, um, uh, the swap meet, outreach is what I call it. Uh, the swap meet, we're, we, we've got to get back to it. We should have already been there, but we're, we're, we're plugging on it. Marla kind of takes the lead on this because she's out there, and uh, I enjoy I enjoy delegating and letting people do. I don't have to be the end all to be all. Believe me, I'm not. But she doesn't usurp any authority from me. She goes out, she gets us set up. So we're headed out there. I we hope soon, right? Okay. When we do the outreach at the swap meet, we set up a little table and a booth, and you get your D9 or D whatever because usually we're on aisle D at the end, and uh, we've just passed tracks out. We talk to people. The goal, of, the goal of the swap meet is to get you over the fear of talking to people about their salvation. That's the goal. The goal isn't to fill up the church building. The goal is to, hey, I got something for you. Has anybody asked you, loved you enough to ask you, where would you spend eternity if you were to die today? And then have at it, Okay. We used to have banners. We had a banner, eternity, smoking or non. Now, that was back for some of us older guys when the restaurants were smoking or non and you could pick. And we had a lot of people stop on that one. What? Smoking or not? And go through it, okay? So when we do that, we'll, we'll talk more. We'll make those announcements. we got to get back to it. Uh, actually, I was, I'm ready to go next Saturday, but uh, we'll have to see schedules and everything, and we'll get that announced out. Also on that, Outreach-wise, starting the startup of a Tucson Bible study, okay? And actually, Tucson's represented this morning. It was kind of cool. We are in the, the works of that. And what I mean by that is, is we're hunting down the hotels, getting the cost to do it. And then we've got a, maybe six or eight people kind of that are interested. And then so it's just those logistics. The holidays put a big wrench in it. Getting sick puts a big wrench in it. But we are still doing it. It is in the works. And I think in March we're just going to bite the bullet and do it and see where we come. Okay? So pray for that stuff like that. There's nothing in Tucson that teaches the word rightly divided. And we need to be down there. There needs to be some present, whether it's weekly or monthly. It needs to be there. So think about that. If you're interested in helping with it, speak up because we can sure use that help. Okay? All right. Um, the fill-in guys, there are uh, certain gentlemen, Keith sitting back there, he's one of them. I don't see, well, Nick's not here this morning, other guys. Fill-in guys are just guys that fill in when I'm gone. Uh, in February, there will be a weekend. The third sat Sunday, I will not be here. Um, we're, we're working on upgrading some things in here uh, audio-video-wise to help with some of that while I'm gone. And then Keith will be here, and we'll say more about that as we go. If you're interested in wanting to be a fill-in guy, you got to talk to me. I don't read minds. It's, again, that desire. you got to have it. I send the email out to a lot of the guys, and uh, I get notes back personally. Uh, no, please remove me. Uh, no, please remove You know, and it, a lot of it is in jest because I know the guys who are doing it. But it's just something that you got to, you know, you want to do. And also, you know, we, we're not, I, I am very guarded who stands up here and teaches and very protective of that. So obviously being with us the year and around us and so forth, 
helps with that and everything like that, okay? But just that's what the fill-in guys are all about, okay? Come over with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Everybody okay? Kind of see what we're doing? I, I wanted the teens in here so they understand church politics because that's what this is to a degree, polit polit politics, okay? Uh, you see 1 Thessalonians 5. Look, if you will, at verse 27. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. You see that? Come over to the end of Colossians. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 16. Colossians 4 verse 16. And when this epistle is read among you, cause that it be read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that ye likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. You see that issue of spreading the word around, getting it read? That's what the Bible project is. And uh, I introduced this about three, maybe four years ago, right before COVID hit, so it kind of staled, stalled. And I want to get it back going again. One of the jobs of a local assembly, especially one that understands the word rightly divided, and holds to a King James Bible. We have the Bible. It's called a King James Bible for us English speakers. Okay, Our job is to maintain it, to protect it, to keep it published. And I know we got apps and all that. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about keeping it in black and white. Okay. So again, several years ago, Gary and Vicki, they were here. Gary and I worked on this uh, together. The, goal, the idea behind the Bible Project is not to identify the English text. We already have that, King James Bible. But now it's to keep it, what, published. Okay? So now we need to root down through the publishers, Oxford, Cambridge, uh, World. I'm trying to think of the binders in my Bibles. Okay, I'll, why? Because the publishers have begun to, uh, uh, PCE, uh, Pure Cambridge Edition, stuff like that. Because the publishers take liberties with your King James Bible. And they make changes. And it's a publisher change. And it's like, okay, so, there, so what Gary and I did was we started kind of compiling a list on how to weed some of that out. And where we find changes that change, the word always and always if you change that in the text in Philippians, you change the doctrine of the, of the chapter. You flip it. So we're trying to protect that. You follow that? Okay. So that's what the Bible project is. I, I, I wanted to do a big publishing house and get a big printer out back and do all this stuff, and that's just not feasible. <laughs> so, and, there, and by the way, there are groups, local church Bible, church published, Bible publisher groups out there that publish and keep the King James published. There's nothing wrong with them. Actually, on the back in the middle, between there, I have a Bible there for you if you're interested in a, in a, in a dressier Bible. It's $80. It comes from these guys. It's identifying them and saying, okay, let's go support that ministry. Why? They're printing it, and we can keep, and we, and we can do. But th that falls in our purview, if you will, and it's something that we're going to be looking at uh, through the year in a non you know, I'm not trying to rock anybody's world. I'm not trying to say your King James Bible's wrong and this King James Bible's right or any of that. I just want us to us here to be consistent with this is where we're going to be, okay? And it's really to identify and work through this publisher thing because I read a King James Bible the other day that it just brutalized some stuff. And I'm like, holy cow. And I thought it was a new King James, but it wasn't. It was King James in the front, and it was a publisher thing. Um, Oxford does it, Cambridge does it, and the new stuff that they're doing. So it's something that we need to be aware of, okay? All right. Uh, obviously, small groups, just what they are. We have a young married couple group right now. We have the men's fellowship, the women's fellowship. We're going to be starting a young, married, or a young families group up and so forth. And then that young married couple thing is going to, the young's going to drop and it's going to become married couples, okay? So we're going to just kind of do some things like that, just some times to get together, have dinner, and a time of fellowship, and, and so forth. All of that I'll be announcing as, I, as we get there, okay? 
All right, any questions? Um, obviously, between the bathrooms, there's a, there is a uh, bookcase there with DVDs and CDs on it. Be careful. What you're, those are, that's a lending library idea. If you're interested, take it, use it, bring it back if you want, keep it if you want. It's okay. Uh, most of that is my dad. So when you see Richard Jordan, that's my dad. Okay. Um, they were, uh, when I was back there in July for the big conference meeting, um, I talked with Debbie and they're trying to, they are literally trying to get rid of all of that because everything's on YouTube now and everybody streams and everybody does it. And I said, well, box up some of that and send it to me and we'll just let people that want it here want to have at it. They can have at it and you're welcome to it. Just make sure you're getting the DVD or the CD or the MP3 because all three are there. Okay. All right. Um, the building remodel. The property and the projects, if you will. Again, the building, the property here is a tool. Obviously, if you look around, we need a little more room, okay? Actually, we, when we first started here, we were putting 80 people in this room consistently. So they're like, well, we're a little tight already. And I'm like, yeah, wait till the winter or, or wait till the summer. Summer, 30. Boom, you know, boom. Okay, so it's like, well, okay. Well, and that's okay. We can do three services. We can we can become mega churchy and do three services, whatever. But the thing is, is what we're going what we decided to do was next door with the children, because that gets a little tight over there. Is we're going to take that carport and enclose it, and then we're going to take that wall and knock the wall down and make a bigger great room, if you will. Okay, especially in the summertime, gets a little tight in there when we're all standing there underneath the air conditioning vent. Okay. So we, we, we hired a contractor, we, had a, we, we, got the, we, we, we started the process. Let me just say it like this, it is held up at the city of Tempe, okay? The city of Tempe, they have, there's rules and regs, and apparently we got to do ABC when we thought we were going to do DENF, and that's what we're doing. So it's been delayed. Uh, we're having to go to the zoning board now, through the zoning board avenue. You're going to see a sign out there that's going to give notice to the community of the change and everything. And uh, just, just so you guys are, that's what we're having to do, okay? Um, it's not that we forgot about it. It's not that the 60K is burning a hole in our pocket um, or any of that. It's just the city's, as soon as the city gives the okays and everything, which is about two months, two, three month process delayed now, then it'll be up in about two months and we'll be good to go, okay? So we're, we're aware of it, we're on top of it. Um, and uh, the contractor is very frustrated because they were told one thing and then the city came in and said, nope, it's this. So anyway, so that's where we're at, okay, on the expansion. You'll see auditorium ceiling remodel listed on your thing there. That's this in here to get this all cleaned up. We were gonna do that, but then we decided we better do the kids first um, and save that, so that's on the list. So when you look up and you go, man, that's ugly, yes, we know, and uh, we'll save the money up and we'll get there, okay? Uh, on each tile, just so you guys know, on each tile, there is the tile size of insulation, and then on top of that is blown-in insulation. So if you move a tile, you get showered in insulation. So it's going to be quite the chore, quite the project to, to do. And uh, when we get there, we'll figure it out, okay? Uh, some have mentioned, what about the parking lot? We're aware of that. Uh, but again, that's on the back burner. We'll save for it and other things. If you see something on the building, around the building, that you think needs to be fixed, and you can fix it, Guess what? Fix it. It's okay. All right? You may say, hey, Rick, I see this. Can I do? And I'll say, yes. Thank you. Okay? Exactly. Motorcycle parking. Okay? If you see something that you think, we, you know, we just need to be aware of, just let me know or let one of the guys on the board know, Brian or Mark, especially because Brian's here with the property, then w at least then it gets in our, in, in our purview in, in our site, and sometimes we may just say, yeah, we're aware of it, and we're uh, working on it. And if you'd like to donate to that project, then donate to that project, <laughs> and type of thing, okay? All right, how we doing? 
these are my meetings. Boom, let's go, right? So the next thing on the list, on your agenda, is simply the issue of open discussion, okay? Um, before we do that, our focus on the building project, okay, on my note, I just saw my note. Our focus is that expansion on, on that enclosure. That's where we're focusing. Okay, so again, if you see something, say something about the building and we'll work on that, okay? All right? Now we got seven minutes to do open discussion before we close with 2 Corinthians 13. Okay? If you don't have anything, you can always come and talk to me. You can text me, you can email me, you can say, hey, Rick, I need to see you. I'm open, I'm here. Again, none of the, none of, if you want to see the books, then we'll get with Brian and we'll get those open for you to look at them if you're just curious about something. If you tell us, we'll figure it out. The, the giving statements went out. If they were wrong, you need to let us know so we can, I mean, we gave Bob an extra $14,000. It's like he would hit the jackpot. Ding dong, you know. By the way, all that was was, was numbers in the wrong column. It was just a typo, you know. But so we get that fixed and everything. Again, folks, I'm not here to lord over you. My ministry verse is 2 Corinthians 1.24. I'm not that, I don't want to have dominion over your faith. I want to be a helper of your joy. Why? For by faith you stand. And that's my heartbeat. That's what I've always had. That's the mentality I've always had. I know what it has been to been under ministries that wanted to lord over you. And I didn't enjoy it, so I know you wouldn't enjoy it. Okay? All right. Any, any open, any... Uh, any questions, complaints, comments, anything like that at all? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. We did them, and then we stopped, and then we started again, and then COVID hit, and we just decided not to any longer. To and really, the conference thing kind of went on pause, if not stopped. Um, due to due to, if you look around the room, we have a lot of older folks working, and I didn't want to put anybody in a position to say I don't want to do it because I don't want to be around, you know, get sick or this and that. I was trying to keep everything just kind of back. It doesn't mean we can't do it in the future. We just don't have any plans right now, and that's really why. Just just because of when I looked around, okay, who's doing the work? I was like, okay, well, you know, maybe people. The last conference we had here, um, the majority of the people in it was our, our folks. And it was like, well, I can always have Dad come out and teach any time. <laughs> just call him. And, uh, but, uh, so we just kind of decided to pause it, which then has been we don't do it now. So, okay. Yes, sir. Bible study, do church in Tucson, but on a Friday night in a hotel room, in a hotel conference room. Um, initially, go down and establish the group. So you go in. We have folks that are down there that are already saved. They need to be edified, okay? I don't live in Tucson. I don't know anything about it other than that's where U of A is, Okay? Let that edified group then go out and build that Bible study. The goal is not to necessarily have another church, if you will, like we have here, but to start a Bible study down there. Okay? Then as we go, obviously, and we get the folks that edified, then they'll be talking to people, you know, and, and then it'll just go like that, and then at that time, we got to get the ball rolling, yeah. And I'll be honest with you folks, for the last 20 years, every winter, is there a church in Tucson? Is there a church in Tucson? Is there a church in Tucson that teaches what you teach? Is there a church? I'm, and I'm like, nope. There was. It, it disbanded, but there isn't any longer. And actually, the folks that disbanded, I only know of one gentleman, and he's in an Acts 2 church and doesn't want to do any of it. So... Okay, then we'll go do. So, okay. Yes. 
an Acts 2 church, they start to church the body of Christ in Acts 2 on the day of Pentecost. When obviously we don't. We we believe it's Acts 9. So and that um, actually the church he's in is uh, a Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic mix. So you figure how that works, but it does. So he's like, okay. All right. Yes, sir. It could be. Right. Yeah. It does a good thought. That's a real good thought. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's a that's a good thought too. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's just a it's just a matter of an opportunity, and. Eric and Daylene are willing to do it. So willing to kind of be the spearhead, the tip of the spear, as they say, for right now. And, and you never know. It can work. It could not work. And you just, you, nothing tried, you know, let's go try it and then work it out, okay? And, and the goal of that would be, again, for the future. So, okay, anything else? All right, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 11. The Apostle Paul says, Finally, brethren, farewell, be perfect, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. That's my prayer for you. As we go this morning, it's straight up noon, it's time. Okay, so let's close in a word of prayer, and then hang, don't move, and we'll give some announcements, okay? All right, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the morning, Lord. We thank you for the folks, for the saints, for their willingness to come and be a part of the local assembly. Lord, I thank you for the, the, the men who step up to be a part of leadership and that job and that duty, and I thank you for them. I thank you for the folks that, that the, the saints, I should say, that give and, uh, and, and help fund and help keep the, the local, this local assembly going. I thank you for all those that are willing to be a part of the outreach and, and the doings and, and so forth that we have. And I do pray that we would be of good comfort, live in peace. And Lord, we know that you'll, you'll, you will give us the peace because of who we are in your Son. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for really for everything because without you and your grace and your mercy, your long-suffering, we would be most men miserable. And we thank you for that. In your name we pray. Amen.